Now let's move on to our second session. We were still focusing on um, the role of digital technology and society and the post pandemic recovery. And um, uh, I will chair the session and um, we have three excellent speakers lined up. Uh, our first speaker, uh, Sonia, Ms. Sonia Kaber, uh, she is a leading figure in the field of technology and the development. Uh, she's the founder of the SBK Tech Venture, which is the first women-led venture capital um, for tech startups in South Asia. And also uh, she's the founder of a SBK Foundation, which is our partner uh, of the ID model project in Bangladesh. And she's also vice chair uh, and the, uh, of, of the governing council uh, um, of the United Nations Technology Bank uh, and also a board member of UNESCO's uh, uh, MGIEP. Uh, before uh, this, and she is also has been uh, a senior uh, uh, manager in many of the Fortune 500 companies, including Oracle, uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, AMRA, etc. And uh, she was uh, also uh, managing director of Microsoft uh, in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, so she, Sonia will be the first speaker and our second speaker uh, is Professor Pina Otska. She's professor of entrepreneurship and innovation at our Said Business School at the University of Oxford. And uh, she's also the academic director of the Oxford Future of Finance and Technology Initiative. And uh, she's a leading scholar in the field of uh, entrepreneurship and innovation. And uh, her current research includes artificial intelligence, business models in FinTech and open banking. Um, and uh, uh, our third speaker is also a great honor. We have uh, Richard Alex uh, Riro, and uh, he is a, a senior economic affairs officer at the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs uh, based in New York. So where he is responsible uh, for science, technology and future research. Um, I, I, I know his work uh, uh, together with his colleagues, he has led uh, many important uh, science policy interface and has supported the creation of a number of new U United Nations initiatives in enhancing the role of science technology for development, including the UN Technology Facilitation Mechanism and the UN Global Sustainable Development Report. Uh, so uh, it's a great honor for us to have all these three uh, distinguished experts uh, today with us in this session to share with us their experience and their wisdom and their research. Uh, so Sonia, now the floor is yours. Thank you, Sholan. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. Um, I will share, I have a uh, slide which I would like to share so that we can go over. Um, are you able to see? Yes. Perfect. So um, I'd like to talk about um, the digital ecosystem. I am a technology professional um, trained in technology. And um, I'd like to represent two of my entities and say how we're looking at the digital inclusion model for the, the developing country. And uh, a little bit about our logo, as you see, SBK logo is that red circle. A lot of people um, ask me what that means. It really comes from these three components, which we feel are very important part of the digital ecosystem. Is, is the first circle is the ecosystem, the dots make what is digital, and then the empowerment collected together. So I always like to spend a little bit of time explaining um, what our logo means. It's very true to the core of what we're trying to do. Um, moving on, today, uh, the topic that I would like to talk about uh, is, is um, technology, inclusion, and bridging the digital divide. We feel that technology is an enabler. Technology can solve a lot of problems. It can have um, huge societal impact. If we are inclusive and we bridge the digital divide, currently 50% um, of the world, um, so of the seven and a half billion people, four billion people uh, do not have internet or do not have connectivity. And in order to be connected, in order to be inclusive, we know that the device and the connectivity go hand in hand. 
So how do we solve for that digital divide is what we will be uh, talking about. And I'd like to um, uh, break the presentation or how I speak into three parts, which honestly will be driving what we feel in our part of the world is the digital inclusion. It will be the digital acceleration. And we've seen a little bit of a glimpse of the digital acceleration post COVID. Um, one of the uh, positive things, it's hard to say it like this, but the truth is one of the positive things that COVID brought about was the accelerated digital uh, transformation. Very, very traditional sectors like education, like health, like the banking sector were forced to embrace a digital solution as they were not everybody was stuck at home, people could not go out, children could not go to schools, universities, and we saw what happened globally. It was a global phenomenon where education embraced technology. I worked for Microsoft for many years and we've been trying to crack um, the, the world with saying, please embrace a digital platform, but we were not successful. COVID was able to do that. So that, 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 signals that yes, the world is ready for embracing a digital transformation in an accelerated way. The transformation that was brought about by COVID in a few months would have taken years had COVID not happened for the industry to um, you know, go and embrace what, what was given through the tech piece. The second thing that, that will, with the digital acceleration, we will see that there will be explosive growth because what will happen is people have now they are now beginning to look at things differently. They're solving problems differently. Technology is just an enabler that sits under whatever process you have, whatever vertical you run, be it a farmer, be it a school teacher, be it a doctor, um, any, any vertical you name, especially in the, in, the, in the developing countries like ours in the least developed countries, technology will be able to become uh, an enabling um, factor in, in driving an explosive growth. And the last thing that will happen is as a result of number one and number two, you will see a transformative impact because you know we, we, uh, our population is, is very big. Just my country, Bangladesh, has 160 million people. So if we can touch the lives of the unbanked, 60 million people are unbanked. There are 40 million students. There are 70 million farmers. Imagine when you can move things with technology, with when you have an accelerated di digital embracing technology, accelerated explosive growth, you are bound to have transformative impact. And, and what we will see is that the GDP point moves further when you suddenly move verticals that are very, very traditional into a, a digital um, platform. I'd like to talk a little bit about what our vision and mission is and then go into the meet say it's it's um, what we're noticing in this part of the world that if we are supposed to be, be very inclusive, we need to ignite the underserved women and youth, our population and if I just give you an example of one country, which is Bangladesh 160 million people 50% under the age of 30 and 50% are women. So we clearly have a very big number of women and youth who are currently underserved. And what we need to do is, is look at them and see how can we invest in their skills? How can we invest in their education? How can we invest in digital literacy for these uh, this masses of the population? To going back to my previous point is digital transformation, explosive growth, and transformative impact. All of these can happen with this sector which is a huge part of our population. The other thing that we, we are seeing is that just giving technology to solve a problem or to, um, to be digitally inclusive is just a stepping stone. It doesn't, it, you, overnight you don't become a successful uh, digitally, a digital entrepreneur. There's a lot of things that need to happen in tandem. So one of the important things is to empower, to build and scale. We have seen a lot of technology that comes and it solves the problems of a niche market. That problem will not be able to solve for the country. So it's very important to scale. It's important to build for masses. It's important what we call consumption or how you consume the technology. The, the solutions have to have the horsepower to, uh, to tackle lots of people on their platform. And that's what we call scaling. So you build to scale and that's how you empower. And in 
order to do all of this, what are the, some of the things that we need to work on is making sure that our people and the people who are going to be coming and being digitally inclusive do have the management skills. These are very basics that we talk about, but, but these are what will drive and make or break solutions that are going to be uh, put forward. And last but not least, being a tech professional, talking to other professionals, we feel honestly that the goal in all of this is to disrupt with technology. And disrupt previously used to be, uh, had a bit of a negative connotation, but I think with technology coming, what we, we try to say it as a positive word, it's saying that anything that happens can be disrupted with technology to accelerate, to embrace, and, and to see how the world can, can leapfrog. Uh, just to give you a very small example, I was living in, the, in Silicon Valley uh, when the cell phone technology came out. And in, in Silicon Valley at that time, we only had cell phones to talk to each other. The, the texting had not come. Uh, the technology was not readily available at that time. I was visiting Bangladesh and, and one of my uh, friends just told me, send me a text message. And I said, what is a text message? She said SMS, and I didn't even understand what that means because we were not used to that in the Valley. What happened was in this part of the world, when you have nothing, you leapfrog because you don't have the inventory. You don't have, you don't have to worry about changing something that has become a big giant, replacing that with something that is more nimble. So the, this part of the world that we are talking about, the developing world, they really do not have anything. So when you have nothing, you leapfrog to state of the art. The technology is changing daily. People are in, in there's innovation going on at faster than the speed of lightning because people are trying to solve problems. COVID has made that much easier because people are looking at technology seriously. And now the question is, how do we get the best how do we offer it to the people so that they don't have to go through the different steps and they scale and they embrace and then a, an existing industry is disrupted. So to give you a few examples, when I talked about the health industry, in this part of the world, we have a shortage of doctors, we have a shortage of nurses um, because there are not enough educational institutions to cater to give the degrees. So the population is very big, Bangladesh 160 million, Myanmar 50 million, Nepal 28 million, Sri Lanka 20 million. We've got these big numbers of people, but we don't have enough of the service providers and the health professional to be serving them. What technology can do is imagine health technology where you can do patient doctor remote consulting. We have a few startups that are doing very well post COVID. They, they have accelerated, they have just, their numbers have just shot up because not only do they have local doctors on this platform, as I said, we have a shortage of doctors. So a local doctor will not be able to give time to a patient doctor remote consulting when his chamber is full of real people waiting in line. But imagine when you tap into the NRB, the non-resident Bangladeshi doctors globally or our other doctors who are in our neighboring country, India, who speak the same languages as us, and they're such a big country with a vast majority of doctors. When you enable them on this platform and, and you when you offer it to the masses, there is clearly a need. The, there's a, there is a demand, but there is no supply. But what technology can do is it can meet the demand and offer a service that people actually want to play, pay for. Um, medicine, medical, uh, you know, seeing a doctor is a very important part of most people's lives. So these are things that technology is doing. It, it, it's not only bridging the digital divide, it, it's, it's making the boundaries disappear. You could be any place, anytime, anywhere and serve someone real time. So that's what the beauty is, and that's how you disrupt existing industries. Very similar example you have seen uh, with education that I talked about. Another very, very traditional industry that, that is going to be disrupted is the legal industry. Everybody knows about court cases, going to court, visiting court, you know, having these hearings. That has also started to go online, which people have realized that you actually do not need to be face to face to get a transaction completed or a court hearing done. And, and then also finding lawyers. It's like these apps have now come up where it's like an Uber of lawyers, an Uber of doctors, an Uber of educators. So this is where the industry is going. We're saying that I need to know knowledge is very important, right? So you need to know who is where, what service is being offered. And all of this is being made possible by technology. 
Um, one, the things that we focus on as a tech venture capitalist and our foundation is we're focusing on emerging South Asia and emerging South Asia, it includes Bangladesh and it also includes the countries I talked about like Myanmar, Nepal, Bhutan, um, Sri Lanka, and, and all these countries are doing very well. If you look at their economic growth, seven to 8% GDP, COVID could not stop them. And many people have asked us why. And one of the main reasons is the informal economy. The farmers that feed us they they you know they're not tax paying citizens so you were, they were not impacted people still needed to eat even with covid happening right so we saw that our gdp didn't fluctuate so many points because the informal economy that, that it kept boosting us so we have high gdp growth we have very high teledensity um, we also are very densely populated countries so we say that we have the demographic dividend, we have the density dividend because we're not very big, but we've got a huge population. And there's another thing that I like to bet on is that we have the data dividend. Data right now is, is the new currency. Data is electricity, data is power. Imagine if in our emerging South Asia, if I say 250 million people generating data on their health, on their education, on their legal services, Whatever you have, if we can generate data on the, the kind of population that we have, we are very attractive to anybody who is in the technology um, space. So the economic growth is, is a huge uh, positive for emerging South Asian countries and their focus on inclusion and innovation, because these countries have realized that we need to leapfrog. The youth are our strength, 50% of the population. We all have demographic dividend. So how do we harness this energy, which probably will stay for another 20 years when the demography actually starts working against us? So this, in this ride, we need to really leapfrog and look at innovation like we've never looked at before. And then we have a Excuse huge- Excuse me, Sonia, you have yes. one minute. Oh, I'm sorry. And then there is impact potential that is very high and financially viable. So these are very important. This is the last slide I will uh, spend time on. It is what we're now trying to do is democratizing. Technology has been done. Now we will focus on democratizing innovation. We will go from digital literacy to digital readiness, and we will go from micro businesses to impact techpreneurs. I don't need to throw this slide. Um, I would just like to show the last slide I have. And this is what uh, SBK Foundation and Technology Hub is. This all brings it together because we are saying, let's bet on technology country, nationwide, set up these centers like the internet cafes of the 80s and see, drive people with youth to embrace solutions that, that can help them uh, uh, be a digital, digitally accelerated platforms. Thank you.